uh, in this uh, class we look at uh, different uh, flow regimes in uh, when we consider a compressible flow. Uh, we had talked about uh, subsonic flow, supersonic flow in the previous class when we introduced uh, compressibility, compressible flows, what is the most important uh, non-dimensional number uh, which is the Mach number and uh, so on. And we looked at several uh, uh, nice images uh, about uh, flows uh, where compressibility effects are important. Usually they are uh, important in gaseous flows at high speeds. And uh, so if we look at uh, uh, the most important uh, non-dimensional number in uh, compressible flows or in gas dynamics, it is the Mach number which is the ratio of the uh, local flow velocity uh, to uh, the speed of sound at uh, in that particular medium at uh, that point. So, Mach number is really a low local uh, quantity uh, and um, the speed of sound is a very important characteristic uh, velocity uh, in uh, describing compressible flows uh, which is for a perfect gas it is square root of gamma r t and uh, whenever Mach numbers become greater than 0.3 um, then we say compressibility effects are important. So, flow is um, compressible. compressible. So, but it can go really all the way 0 0.3, 0 0.7 uh, special case is when it becomes equal to the speed of sound itself which is Mach number equal to 1 and uh, flows beyond that when Mach number becomes greater than 1. What is uh, what are the differences in such flows, what is so special and uh, so on. So, uh, let us uh, take a look at this and see how the flow can be classified into uh, different uh, regimes. So, uh, uh, even before we go there uh, another important uh, uh, sort of idea that can be attached to Mach number is it can be related to the ratio of uh, kinetic energy to the internal energy of the flow. For, you, for example, you take uh, kinetic energy by uh, internal energy. So, E uh, kinetic energy is V square by 2 and internal energy specific internal energy per unit mass. So, this is also per unit mass kinetic energy um, is E and we let us consider a um, perfect gas um, for now and uh, we will see that uh, E is nothing but uh, C V multiplied by T where C V is specific heat at constant volume. Uh, so, we can write it in that form and therefore, you get uh, C V is uh, 1 by gamma minus 1 uh, R, R by gamma minus 1 where R is the specific gas uh, constant and if you um, uh, substitute that in the equation you get R T by gamma minus 1. Therefore, you get uh, if you multiply and divide by a gamma you get uh, v square by 2 divided by E as gamma some constant which is related to the specific ratio of specific heats gamma uh, v square by A square or it is Mach number square. So, you see that uh, kinetic energy the ratio of kinetic energy to internal energy is proportional to Mach number square. Uh, so, uh, if Mach number increases uh, significantly what we find is uh, the kinetic energy becomes a very significant fraction of internal energy. And um, if there are changes in kinetic energy which can happen in the flow uh, changes in high, uh, Mach number velocity and so on uh, then large part of that energy will start interacting with internal energy. So, there is a close interaction between kinetic energy and internal energy in uh, these uh, kind of flows and um, compressible flows you cannot just uh, neglect the energy equation. Uh, you have to consider not only mass momentum uh, conservation, but also energy conservation because of this uh, 
uh, important aspect. So, density is a variable not only is that you have a good interaction between various forms of energy. Okay. So, now you have understood uh, Mach number in different aspects one as uh, uh, the ratio of uh, velocity to uh, acoustic speed. Um, the other its importance in the context of kinetic energy. Now, let us look at it uh, in the uh, context of how it uh, these waves and how is the speed of sound uh, so important in uh, gas dynamics. Uh, so, uh, one uh, when we uh, take a look at this at the outset one should ask a question that uh, if a body is moving in uh, a uh, medium like it is moving in air say car is moving or you are walking in air. Uh, then we know that uh, if there is a body some arbitrary body and it is moving in this direction uh, then we know that air flows past it. Uh, some of these uh, figures you would have come to know uh, in your classes in fluid dynamics. Uh, then uh, you should pause and ask a question if you look at the way these uh, streamlines behave you see that uh, much earlier uh, uh, to the point when the body comes um, to a particular point upstream. So, this is a upstream of this is the upstream of the uh, body which is moving into uh, the gas or into air over here uh, much upstream the um, flow already knows that it has to turn over the body. So, in some sense the flow has a knowledge or is already knowing that it has to take a turn around the body. How does it know? How uh, does it move? Or what is the method by or uh, the mechanism that is happening over here uh, and it moves so smoothly around the uh, body. Uh, this is by means of uh, uh, the information propagation by means of uh, pressure waves as a body moves uh, um, it uh, produces these uh, pressure waves and these pressure waves uh, move at the speed of sound. So, let us take a look at this uh, consider uh, a case when a body uh, a typical body here this body is uh, represented ok it has a certain shape, uh, but actually what we are talking about is an arbitrary body it can be a point uh, particle also and it is uh, currently we are taking it as to, to be stationary and let us say it uh, produces uh, sound or it produces uh, tiny fluctuations of um, pressure which move as the speed of sound. So, if it does that then at a certain instance of time these uh, waves propagate by certain distances which is equal to if you calculate this uh, distance it will be nothing but a multiplied by uh, that specific uh, time interval uh, time interval. So, a t ok some specific distance here the body is not moving. So, you will see you get a set of these circles. So, you just get a set of such uh, concentric uh, circles. Okay, now, let us uh, go ahead and let uh, this body start uh, moving and we take a sample of these uh, uh, pressure waves which are uh, sent out from the body at uh, particular intervals of time. Now, here the body is also moving. So, at the initial this is the initial case at when the body is at this particular location it emits a um, uh, sound wave and that wave propagates at a certain other instance uh, the body has moved by a certain distance which is v t uh, that is v multiplied by that small change v delta t while the sound has moved uh, by a distance a delta t uh, a small uh, time interval uh, delta t the sound has moved to such a distance, but the body has moved only by a small distance. And we see uh, that uh, the sound wave actually moves much faster than the body. So, you can see these circles are uh, sound waves that are emit emitted at subsequent intervals of time. Uh, these sound waves are always ahead of the body. So, 
any changes in small changes in pressure immediately gets transferred upstream of the body, downstream of the body everywhere and uh, the flow in turn comes to know that a body is approaching its point therefore, it has to turn and it turns. So, this is the case when the velocity of the body is lower than the speed of sound and you find that uh, the body is always uh, moving slower uh, than the speed of sound and the sound is able to move much faster than the body. So, you get these kind of uh, circles uh, which indicate uh, such a motion. But now, let us take a case. Now, you see that uh, if you look at this particular picture due to the motion you will see that upstream there is a um, sort of uh, uh, compression or convergence of these uh, uh, waves of uh, sound. Now, but if the body moves exactly with the speed of sound at each instant of time the body moves at exactly the same distance as the uh, speed of sound. So, if we do uh, just uh, look at it you see at every point it is moving exactly at the speed of sound and all these sound waves at the upstream uh, portions they all coalesce they all come together. Uh, because now you see that um, it becomes difficult for uh, fluid particles which are ahead of this particular body uh, to uh, feel that the body is coming towards them because that was the me mechanism uh, the pressure waves were the mechanism by which they would have known, but now the pressure waves are moving at the same speed as the body is moving. So, now the fluid particles ahead of the body uh, do not come to know readily that uh, the body is approaching them and suddenly they will come to know that the body is there. So, this is the basis for uh, how shock waves are produced um, that there is uh, suddenly there is a change which happens in uh, speeds greater than the speed of sound much before that um, it uh, all upstream locations know that there is some change happening place and therefore, uh, solutions are smooth. But once you uh, once you go beyond Mach number equal to 1 or beyond the acoustic speed. Uh, now, let us consider the case when the object is moving at uh, supersonic speed that is uh, its velocity is greater than the speed of sound. Uh, then what happens is at particular instant if a uh, sound wave or if a per pressure perturbation is produced it moves at a speed uh, this speed at which it moves is a t, but the object moves much faster than that this speed is v t. So, every subsequent uh, circle is actually uh, this sound is left behind and the object moves much faster than that. Mm, so, you see that the object is moving much much faster. So, if you just draw a tangent to all these circles it represents a certain cone it represents a certain angle um, beyond which at all these locations uh, the uh, flow or the uh, medium never knows that a body is moving at uh, speeds which is much greater than the speed of uh, sound. So, th this we can call is zone of uh, silence. Uh, this is uh, uh, the reason why when objects move at speeds greater than the speed of sound um, we do not hear them we first see them and we hear them only once these waves which are known as Mach waves which is this uh, the coalescence of several sound waves uh, only when these Mach waves go past a particular point only at that time uh, you come to know the presence of the object, uh, but uh, by that time the object would have really gone past and it would be at some other uh, location. Now, what is this particular angle? you can construct uh, the uh, simple trigonometric relations the angle is this here is 90 degree it is a tangent. So, you are looking at this angle uh, which is known as the Mach angle mu 
and uh, this speed is uh, a t while the distance it would have covered at the same time is v t. Uh, so, uh, sin of this angle is a t by v t is sin mu and uh, therefore, you see this a, t a by v is nothing but 1 by Mach number. So, mu is sin inverse 1 by m. So, this is something that you would come to understand uh, very well during the course of the, during this course that uh, in supersonic flows uh, there is a particular direction to which uh, information can propagate or uh, pressure waves can propagate or uh, so on and that directionality is very important in supersonic flows. In subsonic flows this directionality is not there it is absent. Uh, and so, uh, uh, there are consequences uh, on how these different uh, kinds of flows are, uh, are uh, evaluated or analyzed and so on. Okay. So, if you look at the so different flow regimes, you really have uh, such uh, different uh, regimes for Mach numbers which are less than 0.3 you essentially do not consider the compressibility effects and you say that it is an incompressible flow. For Mach numbers greater than 0.3, you have to consider uh, compressible flows, but um, these flows initially they are uh, having velocities which is less than the speed of sound, they are more smooth, these flows are smooth and you call them subsonic flows. Uh, when you approach the speed of sound which is Mach number equal to 1 and you have a body for example, let us consider this uh, kind of an airfoil in uh, a uniform flow. Uh, in this case what we are talking about is the Mach number of this uh, uniform flow. Uh, then your uh, if you consider such a body which is uh, where the Mach number of the uniform flow m infinity approaches 1 from the subsonic side. So, it is approaches approaching 1 and it is in uh, still in the subsonic region, but when you see the flow happening over a body then if you take say for an airfoil initially flow accelerates. So, in some local uh, area or the local region in the airfoil the flow can become supersonic, but uh, the conditions on the airfoil are such that uh, or in the flow are such that it cannot support a full supersonic flow. So, later on at some certain point you get shock waves and flow becomes uh, again subsonic. So, you have a pocket of supersonic flow and then a pocket of subsonic flow, you have a mixed uh, region of flow. So, this happens to flow over bodies or such kind of flows uh, when Mach number approaches really close to 1. Uh, this can also happen in the supersonic side also, it is very close to 1, but not very um, high also. So, it is say Mach number 1 to 1.2, you again for such flows uh, as we had discussed the flow would not know um, that, uh, that a body is there. So, a shock wave develops, but across the shock wave since it is very close to 1, the region over here is Mach number is less than 1 but the flow again accelerates becomes greater than 1 and so on. So, you have pockets of uh, supersonic and subsonic flows um, existing uh, when Mach numbers are very close to 1 and that kind of flow is known as uh, transonic flow. Okay. So, that is the transonic flow, subsonic flow in subsonic flow the flow is always subsonic throughout. Mm. But then uh, once you get to Mach numbers which are really higher um, say Mach numbers greater than 1.2 and so on, uh, then uh, the shock waves become more oblique and you get dominantly supersonic flow all over and that kind of flow is known as supersonic flow. Uh, when you have very high Mach number flows then certain important uh, phenomena occur. Uh, like uh, what we were discussing uh, the kinetic energy becomes very high. Uh, so, uh, when uh, you have a shock wave and uh, uh, velocity decreases across the shock wave, uh, this kinetic energy change gets dumped into internal energy or it goes to increasing temperature of the body significantly. 
and you get certain other things happening uh, due to such high temperature effects and that changes lot of flow physics uh, in those bodies. Uh, such uh, ha things that happen at very high Mach numbers is known as hypersonic flow and that typically a ballpark number is m infinity greater than 5. Okay. It is a uh, rough estimate and uh, a brief introduction to hypersonic flow will be provided towards the end of the uh, course. So, let us look at uh, these different aspects that we discussed if we just do a simple numerical computation over uh, some of the standard uh, CFT softwares. Uh, that will provide us some uh, idea about what is happening. Here we are representing uh, two images. Um, these uh, numerical simulations have been performed by our team at IAC and uh, uh, here we are representing uh, two uh, images for a particular case, uh, a typical airfoil in a, a flow. Uh, where the flow Mach number here is in the subsonic region of 0.6, it is a compressible flow. Um, and here what we are seeing uh, is uh, a, a picture of the Mach number variation, Mach number contours and the on the right hand side you have uh, uh, variations of density which is uh, similar to a uh, Schlieren. Here uh, the flow is extremely smooth. Uh, significant changes you see uh, close to uh, the wall which where viscous effects become important around the boundary layer. Uh, but uh, otherwise outside the flow is very uh, smooth. Uh, first there is an acceleration and uh, then the Mach number increases okay. and then at the uh, rear part there is a uh, deceleration. So, smooth flows um, around the airfoil at Mach 0.6. Okay. Now, if you go uh, to higher and higher Mach numbers, you find that uh, um, these uh, it is still uh, subsonic, these uh, flows are still uh, smooth, initial there is an acceleration, but the Mach number does not go to such an extent uh, that it becomes uh, supersonic or uh, reaches Mach number 1. Higher Mach numbers are still mm, around the body are still subsonic. But once you reach Mach number 0.8, you find that the acceleration has happened to such an extent that in a local region the Mach number increases to beyond Mach number 1. So, Mach number is greater than 1. Uh, but the conditions uh, around the uh, airfoil are not uh, sufficient to uh, support Mach number 1 all through. Therefore, there is a sharp front here uh, which is a shock wave and this shock wave suddenly changes the Mach number to um, lower values. So, it uh, gets to about Mach numbers close to 1.2. Uh, in this region and after the shock wave Mach numbers drop down to uh, 0 0.8 and so on. And this has consequences, uh, this uh, sudden change will disrupt the boundary layer, it can cause uh, separation and so on and this can cause a large increase in drag uh, which is what uh, uh, is known as uh, the critical Mach number and uh, you need really good amount of energy to go past this high drag. So, earlier much earlier uh, they thought that it is very difficult to go beyond uh, Mach number equal to 1 due to this sudden increase in uh, drag near the uh, critical Mach number. Uh, but later it was found that once you uh, go past this uh, uh, di uh, difficulty it is again possible to have higher uh, velocity. So, now uh, supersonic flight is more common now uh, than earlier. Mm. So, you see now that flow structures start uh, changing at Mach 0.9 this shock wave is pushed very close to the uh, trailing edge of the airfoil. Mm. This is these uh, regions lie in the transonic regime where you have pockets of supersonic and subsonic flow. Uh, now, you see as Mach number increases further you have a region again, this is again in transonic flow 
uh, here uh, the Mach number incoming is higher it is Mach number is greater than 1, but uh, due to the presence of the body the flow should know that it should happen therefore, a shock forms here this is the shock and uh, then you get Mach number less than 1 then flow again accelerates to Mach numbers greater than 1. So, you see this is again in the transonic regime. So, 1.2 falls in transonic regime, but once you get to higher and higher Mach numbers this uh, uh, shock comes very close to the body and now uh, predominantly the, the body is in supersonic flow. Okay. So, this uh, particular uh, uh, numerical simulations that we just showed now um, you can see the exactly similar um, uh, videos over airfoils uh, placed in wind tunnels as the Mach number changes from 0.7 to 1 uh, and these were taken by uh, NASA and they are available in YouTube uh, and you can watch them the link is given over there and that will give you a better appreciation of what we did here in the uh, class. So, uh, with this uh, we move on, uh, so with this we close here and move on to uh, initial parts where we look at uh, thermodynamics uh, in the uh, next class, uh, thank you.